Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm going to show you how to build a seven to eight figure business in less than 10 minutes. And these are all steps that you can implement quickly. Make sure to listen to the entire video because if you miss any single step, it will affect you, right? Number one, as a CEO, business owner, entrepreneur, or intrapreneur, you need to identify every single task that you take every single week that does not drive revenue to your business. This could be administrative task, onboarding, recruiting, payroll. It could be anything that doesn't actively bring income into the company. Now, next to each one of these things that you've written down or put in your notes, I want you to place ne next to it how many hours you spend per week on this task. Many times, this could be as high as 20 to 40 hours that you're spending not growing your business. Now, to be fair, you have to do it because if you don't do these things, the business will break down, have inefficiencies, and cause issues. But let's first figure out how much time are you actively spending on these tasks. Second is you're going to create what's called a standard operating procedure for each one of these tasks. It's important to be as detailed and specific as possible, almost as if you were training a robot to follow everything to the T. This includes links. Descripts, descriptions, exact buttons that you press. It's actually great also to put screen, excuse me, screenshots of the exact things that you want them to click where it's circled or highlighted so they could do it. You want this to be so simplistic and basic that if someone were to come into your company within a day or two, they could run and fulfill that entire job fully with almost no errors. Step three is you're gonna hire a virtual assistant or an administrator to take over those tasks. A lot of people don't realize this, but virtual assistants are all over the world, and because of the difference in exchange rates of currencies, for what you would pay them, while in America would not be a lot, for their specific uh, country, it would actually be extremely valuable and it would actually make their life better. You could pay them which would be considered very low for American, which could be life-changing money for them in their country. So not only is it a win for them, but it's a win for your business. You're able to keep costs low and you're able to delegate tasks that you don't need to be doing as the CEO or as a business owner, okay? Once you hire them, you wanna be able to implement them into your business, train them and give them all the standard operating procedures for every area of your business that you would like to delegate. You want to do as much as humanly possible. And in my experience, they've been so good that I've actually fired people that were making seventy dollars to $100,000 a year working for me because they were lazy, they're entitled, or they just could not do things as efficiently and add as much economic value to the business as someone that was actually from another country. Just odd, and that's just what I've seen. Okay, now, once you have implemented this new administrator or virtual assistant, you want to then refocus, because you think about it, you're going to have an extra 10 to 40 hours of energy and time that you don't have to spend on those areas of your business. It's important to then refocus on the systems, the processes, and the creative strategy and growth of your business. You want to start refocusing on things that actually scale and grow your business. During this time, not only is it going to feel invigorating, you're going to feel you know, more energized, more focused, and more happy, but you're going to be able to do things that actually matter as the CEO. Each CEO is different, and you should focus on what you like most and what, you, what, what is the most value that you serve to your business. For example, there's a lot of CEOs like a Richard Branson that is incredible at the creative side and the marketing strategy. He is not a business operator. He is incredible at going into disruptive, in, uh, going in and disrupting industries and doing guerrilla marketing tactics and doing things that are unhinged. He'll be at a party and he'll just jump in the middle of the pool. He's shown up to Times Square with a tank and faced it right at a Coke sign. There's so many different things that he's done that he is great at. If you look at Elon Musk, while he's a great marketer, he's truly an engineer. So the bulk of his energy is spent on design and engineering. That's where he specializes in. So that's where his, his focus is as the CEO. Now, to scale your business and increase its revenue and profitability, you first have to put together the equation and the math problem to scale your business. When you're building and scaling a company, it is a machine. 
and it has almost an algorithm of growth that you have to follow. So there's a simple formula. It's called customer acquisition to lifetime value. That cal calculation right there is how you're going to scale your business. Customer acquisition is how much it costs to acquire one customer. Meaning, if you invest $1,000 in Facebook ads, and because of that ad that you ran, your business closed 10 customers, that means it costs $100 to acquire one customer. Now, lifetime value is how much one customer is going to pay you over the course of that life that they do business with you. For each business that's different, let's say, for example, in this scenario, it costs $100 to acquire a customer, and when you acquire that customer, they are going to spend $1,000 with you. That means for every $100 you spend, the business is going to revenue a thousand, which means if I give $1, I get $10, which means my CAC to LTV ratio is one to 10, which means if I want to scale my business, instead of me spending simply a thousand dollars to acquire 10 customers to make 10,000, I need to multiply the amount of marketing dollars that I'm investing to multiply the actual customers I'm receiving to multiply my revenue. Okay, so I'm gonna say that one more time. CAC to LTV ratio. You wanna figure out that number. And if it's too low, you either gotta increase your prices, improve your marketing and advertising, or get in a new industry. And I'm serious when I mean that. Because the higher that ratio, the more profitable and better margins that your business has, and the more likelihood, not only you're gonna be able to scale, but you're actually gonna be able to survive and stay in business. Okay, now what you want to do before you press that scale button is you want to build out the infrastructure to support that. I'll give you an example for solar. In solar, it typically costs us anywhere between $750 to $1,250 to acquire one customer. Now, if I want to do 100 deals in a month, let's say if the average customer acquisition cost is $1,000, I have to spend $100,000 to acquire 100 customers. And let's just assume 100% retention, which won't happen. We're typically 70%. Our average deal is about $35 to $38,000, which means if I spent $100,000, that would create around $3.5 million to $3.8 million in sales. So I'm solving that math problem. But when it comes to infrastructure, for example, in uh, my solar business, I have a lot of different businesses, but that's one of them. I have to have the sales team to support that amount of scale. So if I know, for example, that our sales reps can take an average of 30 appointments per month, and I know the conversion that they're at, and I also know that the average sales rep for us averages about 3.2 to 3.4 deals per month, gross, before backouts, before cancels or anything, I need to make sure that I have enough sales reps within that amount of appointments and without, or excuse me, with the amount of capacity to handle us, instead of investing $100,000 a month in leads, to increasing that to 125 or 150. So what I want you to do is look at your business and make sure that your administrative support, customer support, sales support, and fulfillment for whatever you guys specifically do, whatever your business is, can support your desired growth. Okay, because remember, if you're only spending $1,000 to get your 10 clients to make $10,000, and you're doing $10,000 a month in revenue, and you want to go to $100,000, that means you're going to need, based off that same customer acquisition, you're going to have to spend 10, 10 times that amount on marketing. But the support side in the back in office or back in operation of your business has to be able to feel, fulfill that or the customer satisfaction, reviews, and success of your business and the way it's perceived to the marketplace is gonna drastically drop. Okay, so let's say you're like, Grant, I wanna scale five times my revenue. So I wanna go from 10,000 a month in revenue to 50,000 in revenue. Build your infrastructure to support your business doing five times the amount of revenue. Then, instead of spending, in this example that's very simple and basic, before anybody's, no, it would never be that, it's, it's an example. So plug and play it to your business specifically. What you want to do is, you can do this in a free way actually, is if you're in America, you're in the EU, Dubai, a lot of different places, go and get a business credit card. 
JP Morgan, uh, sometimes MasterCards, but J really JP Morgan and Amex has fantastic credit card options where if you have over a 700 credit score, you have decent revenue that's over six figures, you can likely get a line of credit of anywhere between 10 to $50,000. And if you get multiple credit cards, for some of you that do have high revenue and great credit, if you get three to four credit cards, you could likely have anywhere between 50 to $200,000 in lines of credit and money that is accessible to your business. Remember, you've already figured out the formula to scale your business. You figured out your CAC to LTV ratio. You know how much it costs to acquire a customer. You know what you're going to make. You know the multiple. You know you want to scale your business five times. Now, it's very simple. You go and you get a business credit card. For example, a great one is a Plum credit card with, um, with, with Amex. There's the Amex Blue card, which actually has 0% interest for the first 15 months, which means let's say you have a $30,000 line of credit with Amex. You could use $30,000 continuously, not counting what you pay off, for free, 0% interest. You just have to pay that money back. So instead of spending $1,000 a month, I'm going to go get an Amex Blue card with 0% interest. Amex Platinum, a JP Morgan, Inc. Inc. Business Credit Card, whatever that is. And you're going to invest, instead of $1,000, because remember, you built your infrastructure. You're going to invest $5,000 over the course of the next four weeks on your ad spend. You're going to closely monitor your customer acquisition costs to make sure that you're staying at this $100 mark. You're going to aim lower. If it's higher, you're going to have to adjust this. You may have to spend... 5,800, 7,500. You need to identify all these things, but you need to try to stay as close or lower than your customer acquisition target to make sure that you have good cash flow and good margins. So this is simple. I'm going to spend $5,000 now, and I have a 1 to 10 ratio. If I can keep your customer acquisition still at that $100 mark, then now I'm going to do simply $50,000 in revenue. And I'd already built the back-end support to handle this. So that's how you just went from a $10,000 revenue business per month to a $50,000 revenue business. And all you did is you delegated your administrative tasks, you increased the support, and you figured out the ratio to grow your business, and you pressed the scale button. So that is how, in simple forms, how you scale a business. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you enjoyed this. I'm going to be posting more business content. Also, check out the Grant Mint podcast for strategies not only to grow in business, but succeed in life, deal with um, networking, growing your business, creative strategies, where you guys, I'm telling you right now, you listen to 90 days straight of my podcast and listen to my content, you'll alter your entire life forever. So hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys again soon.